You know, we've been telling these different stories of historic Idlewild, and, and, and there's really an interesting story I stumbled over. It, it's a different way to tell this story, but it's fascinating. It, it's all about what's being called the healing waters of Idlewild. To understand the healing waters of Idlewild, you must first understand the history of why Idlewild has been a safe haven for blacks for 117 years and counting because the history of why Idlewild came to be is not past history at all. In the early 1900s, blacks were legally discriminated against in the housing industry. Legal or not, it continues in different ways today. Blacks have suffered disproportionately at the hands of police throughout history. Because of their race, people were being uh, harassed, and we are seeing the same kinds of things happening now that used to happen then. We see people being accosted and harassed. We see people wanting to feel safe. In 1917, the widow of a Chicago minister, Olive Bird Clanton, heard about this place in Michigan called Idlewild. She had 11 children and wanted a place for them to be safe a planned community where blacks could buy property and live in a cocoon of safety with fresh air, land, and water. For five generations, the children of Olive Clanton and their children and their children and their children have used this property to simply survive the outside world. Not knowing Miss Olive's decision to plant roots in this soil would save the life of her granddaughter Edna 103 years later. I grew up obviously before cell phones. You had to be home by the time of the whistle. We had a six o'clock whistle in the fire station then, but you could play from the moment you got up to the end. And this is where you'll find 83-year-old Edna Arrington Brown every sunset on hot summer's eves, kayaking. And while you might find it extraordinary to find an 80-something-year-old kayaking every evening, it's even more extraordinary when you find out that just before COVID, Edna was diagnosed with both breast cancer and stage 3 lung cancer. I was amazed. I've never smoked. Not that it matters. Living in California at the time and only returning to Idlewild in the summers, Miss Edna changed her routine. We had set up for the chemo and radiation um, if needed and all of those things had a couple of weeks and each time I just was able to fly back here getting up in the morning and having all this stillness except for the birds or crickets I can't really tell you how it restores you I can't tell you how it restores you makes you just one with creation. And for the last two and a half years, her schedule is simple. Up at the crack of dawn to walk more than a mile to the Idlewild post office and back. I love the dirt road part of my walk. Wednesday is bridge with fellow Idlewilders. <laughs> <laughs> Clean, fresh air on demand and back to Lake Idlewild as the sun sets on the day. It's almost amazing. We seem to just live forever. I mean, my grandmother, who was born in the mid-1800s, lived to almost 90. And uh, both of my parents lived a long time. My father was 87 and my mother just a month before her 91st birthday. And they always attributed it to the healing waters of Idlewild. <laughs> That's not to say there are medicinal properties in the water. Perhaps there are, or perhaps not. It hasn't been tested, <laughs> but what has been tested is the spiritual bond this place has on generations for more than a century who've lived here, played here, and felt safe here when the outside world did not and does not. This family has called this longitude and latitude on the shores of Lake Idlewild home for 105 years and five generations. And while modern medicine can do great battle with cancer, Miss Edna does not believe she could have survived had she not had Idlewild. I think the Native Americans who were part of this before we were are also part of it. Seeing the oneness of our beautiful sky, these lovely pine trees and this water, it really is almost a synergy of everything all together, making a wholeness. That's what I really think it is. 
And so, away from the troubles of the world, outside of Idlewild, where racism and discrimination now hide in other forms, where there are fears and concerns of harassment and danger, even today, there's this tiny dot on the map that's hard to find unless you're looking for it, or if you have roots so deep they lovingly entangle you, no matter where you are. Idlewild calls, and Edna always answers. Paula Tutman, Local 4.